So how much do billionaires really pay in taxes? They're the biggest billionaires in America behind brands like Amazon and Tesla. Their personal fortunes, enormous. But turns out their tax bills, in some cases, are not. Not even close, as newly revealed records show exactly how the ultra-rich can work the system to pay nothing in income tax in certain years. And this is when our journey really began as we dive into the intricate strategy and tactics employed by the wealthiest in our society to learn how to optimize their tax strategies. It was during this exploration that we stumbled upon a transformative gem that would change everything. More on that in a few. Today, we're going to explore what the Uber rich have been using for years to pay little to no taxes and what you can do today to lower your taxes. But first, you'll need to understand how taxes work and why it's so critical that you lower them. During our fashion days, like many of you, we came to terms with taxes being an inevitable aspect of adult life, where the notion prevailed that the higher your earnings, the greater your payments. This leads to a perpetual sense of apprehensions feeding the metaphorical tax fees. The more we earn, the more we felt compelled to relinquish to that not so favorite unk, Uncle Sam, and we were well aware of the substantial consequences that follows if we discarded this reality. For years, we embraced this reality until a moment of realization hit. Continuing down this path, even for another year, would be utterly detrimental, and we thought to ourselves, there's got to be a better way. A moment of shared contemplations, our eye locked in a mutual understanding that instant marks are awakening. The recognition that achieving genuine wealth, financial, and time freedom demand a fresh perspective. So it dawned on us that we were running a business and allowing fear taxation to halt our income generation was simply illogical. Remember the book gem we discovered? Well, that book was none other than Rich Dad, Poor Dad. From the book, we learned that government wrote their tax code as a guide with tips on how to score their approval and lighten your tax load. Think of it as an adventure, the government sneakily nudging us towards certain moves and choices with the tax system. Kind of fun when you think about it that way, right? <laughs> Essentially, taxes are far from just money collectors. They're just strategic tools nudging us to mold us into actions that's in sync with the government's aspirations for a prosperous society. Think of it like a real war game of like Monopoly, but with the most intricate board games rule ever. When you follow their cues, whether it's channeling your investments towards specific sectors, advocating for eco-friendly habits, or aiding community well-being, we discover the secret pathway to tax advantages and exemptions. There's this thing called the cash flow quadrant that we learn about in the purple book we mentioned earlier. Yeah, in the book, author Robert Kiyosaki introduces the framework that's called cash flow quadrant. This is a framework that neatly sorts people into four distinct categories, each defined by their main income source. E is for employees, S is for self-employed, B is for business owners, and I is for investors. Let's explore each category and what they mean to you. First up, you have employees, E, who are individuals who earn income through their jobs and taxes are often withheld from their paychecks even before they receive them. The tax system treats their earned incomes like salaries and wages, distinctively imposing higher taxes rate and fewer deductions compared to other income sources. Self-employed as individuals include freelancers, consultants, business owners, small business owner proprietors that is, who generates income through their expertise and endeavor. Their taxation involves the overall business income, leading them to shoulder both the employee side and the employer tax portions. As a result, their tax responsibility exceeds those of employees. Unfortunately, those entrants in this quadrant might feel they're on the receiving end of the short straw when it comes to taxes. Business owners be on the flip side enjoy the perks of subtracting business expenses prior to computation of their taxable income. This practice can notably slash their tax obligations, rendering their tax situation more advantageous in contrast to employees or self-employed folks. Best of all, investor quadrant, I. Bringing in earnings from passive investment like dividends, capital gains, and rental income. The tax regulations frequently bestowed preferential handling on investment proceeds, yielding reducing tax rates, and a spectrum of tax perks. If you find yourself in this investor's quadrant, congratulations! Yay, right? I like those stuck in the E, employees, and S, self employed quadrants. Investors liberate themselves for the time money buying. Their income isn't solely tied to their skill, effort, or limited hours. They leverage compounding and the art of earning while they are asleep. As they amass wealth in the investor's quadrant, these savvy investors additionally taps into tax benefit offered to passive income streams. So if you're like us, you probably wonder which passive income strategy to employ for optimal gain. And guess what? This approach is incredibly accessible and you might find yourself questioning why you didn't initiate it earlier. 
to shed some light on this, let's rewind to the events of 2017. In 2017, a pivotal legislative move took center stage, entered the 2017 Tax Cuts and Job Act TCJI, which brought in bonus depreciation. With bonus depreciation in play, apartment investor gained the advantage of deducting a substantial chunk of qualified asset expenses in the year they're put in operations, as opposed to stretching the depreciation deduction over multiple years. This translates to instant tax savings and enhanced cash flow for investors, rendering it an enticing tax tactic for those venturing into real estate, especially apartments. By leveraging bonus depreciation, a part investor can fast track their tax deduction, curving their taxable income and potentially reducing near-term tax burdens. So how big is a payoff investors typically get? Allow us to introduce David, our real-life passive investor, who opt to inject $100,000 into an apartment complex. Thanks to the property's attributes and advantageous tax provisions of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, David became eligible for a generous 62% bonus depreciation on his qualifying assets in year one of his ownership. The $100,000 investment in the apartment and strategic deployment of 62% of bonus depreciation, David can substantially slash that taxable income stemming from his venture. What's more, if he qualifies as a full-time real estate professional, these tax benefits can seamlessly offset his income from other avenues, ushering even more extensive tax savings. Once again, it's worth emphasizing that in the realm of tax laws and regulation, it's so intricate and prone to shift, right? With individual scenarios often diverging. For investors like us, you and David, forging a close partnership with a really great tax advisor or specialist is critical. Such experts can help you navigate complex tax codes, tailoring optimal tax strategies that align seamlessly with your unique financial circumstances. Now that you understand how to live a tax-free life, if you want to get started ASAP, then you need to watch this video on your investing game, Three Paths of Apartment Mastery.